All right, so now let's get into treatments. We've talked a lot about fractures, what it looks like, complications. So now what are we going to do about it? Now there's a lot here, so I'm probably going to break this down too. I'm probably going to talk about um, reduction and stuff in this one. I'll talk about traction in another one, and then um, maybe traction and fixators I'll talk about together, and then I'll talk about you know other immobilizers, casts, braces, splints, stuff like that in a different one. Um, but there's a lot of different things, but effectively the big picture here is I want to keep the bone aligned and I want to get it back in a place that it can heal. The only way a bone can heal is if it's back in that normal anatomical position and the bone is in a place to heal. Um, it takes time. Um, you know, fracture healing uh, can take uh, many weeks to months usually. And so um, we want to set the bone up in a position to um, that's like a good alignment, not just to allow it to heal, but also like we mentioned to prevent complications. Other things that can help um, with uh, muscle healing uh, mobility are going to be physical and occupational therapy. Remember, physical therapy, mobility, occupational therapy, um, you know, the day to day um, activities of daily living. Um, and then, you know, throughout this process of healing, the patient's going to have symptoms aside from pain, which usually, you know, acutely we'll start with opioids. We always want to do least invasive first, but usually these patients have some pretty extreme pain. So usually require some sort of um, opioids, but if we can just use NSAIDs, things like that too, we'll do it. Um, but especially with people with like hip fractures, which we'll talk about separately here in a few, um, they can be higher risk for having um, muscle spasms. Uh, but in general, like anyone with a fracture can have uh, muscle spasm issues. Um, it's just like, you know, uh, muscle spasms are um, kind of like irritability that's going on in the muscles that um, can really lead to a lot of discomfort. So sometimes using pain medicines in conjunction with also relaxers is super helpful. And so, um, so here's some names of some uh, muscle relaxers that I would be familiar with if I were you. Um, these are some common ones. I'm going to call them by the names that I know them by. Flexoril, Soma, and Robaxin. Robaxin is probably the most common one I've given. I've seen Flexoril given. I have maybe given Soma like once or twice, but they do talk about it a lot in your textbook. Um, and then for all of these medications, they are respiratory depressants and they also depress your vascular system in that they can lower your blood pressure, lower your respiratory rate, and also can um, cause a decrease in level of consciousness. So um, what do you call it? You want to do close assessments and be watching for those. So when I say it's all about alignment, um, you know, I talked about this when I talked about um, fat embolism syndrome, that at the end of the day, I really, really, really want to make sure that everything stays well aligned. Um, that's one of my priorities when the patient first gets to the hospital, um, or even like, let's say that I'm working out in the field and there's a patient that looks like they have a fracture or something. I want to do my best to keep it um, in the same position. I do not want to bend, move it in any other position. I want to keep it as aligned as possible. Uh, think of like a 90 degree angle, depending on which bone it is, of course. Um, so I want to keep, I do not want to be moving it around a lot. So um, there's a couple different ways. And most of these, what I'm talking about, we're going to talk about each of these individually. These are things the doctor's doing. When we talk about reducing a, a, an injury or reducing a, a broken bone or a fracture. Um, think we're, we're reducing it to put it back into place. Um, the doctor can come and do a bed size closed or manual reduction, which I'll talk about separately. It's not surgical. Um, and the sooner they can do that, the sooner it's like semi-aligned. And then, then sometimes they need to go to surgery later and do a more formal reduction, what's called an open reduction, or sometimes the closed is enough on its own. Um, the doctor may also place the patient in what's called skin or skeletal traction that helps to either temporarily or more long term keep things aligned and in place. Um, now, some patients get all of these. They might have a, initially a closed reduction. Then we do an open reduction or surgery. They might be in traction before or after. Um, you don't have to. There's not like a particular method or way or combination of these. It just varies. Um, and then uh, usually after if there is a reduction done before or after sometimes no reduction is done and so it's not always needed um, we also immobilize so we align and then we immobilize and immobilizing is keeping it in that place so it can heal so it's going to be things like casting splinting um, or sometimes what we call um, what we use is what's called fixation and we'll get into more of these there's a lot of terminology here but I think once we break it down it will um, make a lot more sense so I think I will stop the video here and I will make a separate video that's just about a reduction. So I'll see you for that one.